Hi, and welcome to another episode of Haltech Heroes. Today, we're here with Brian Bue's Z06 C5 Corvette. We're gonna be having a bit of a look at all the Haltech stuff that's in the car, as well as how he's modified the car to run in the World Time Attack series. Now that we've got the hood off, we can take a look at the LS6 that powers Brian's car. Now, the first thing we can see is the OTR, or Over the Radiator Intake System, that's feeding into the 102mm billet throttle body. We've got an aftermarket intake manifold, aftermarket fuel rails, that are all bolted to what's essentially a stock LS6 engine. It does have a custom camshaft, and that's what helps it make the 440 horsepower at the wheels. We also notice on the front of the car, we've got a V-mounted radiator, which helps to get the air in, cool it down a little bit better. We've got an electric thermofan and an electric water pump mounted just here to control the cooling of the engine. And something that's interesting about these two are they're both controlled through the Haltech engine management system. So rather than just turning them on or off, we actually pulse both the fan and the water pump so that when the water temperature is very cold, so let's say around freezing, we don't circulate that water very often and we obviously turn the thermofan off. As the engine gets hotter, we start to circulate the water through the engine faster in order to cool the engine faster. So we call this PWM or pulse width modulated. And that's the way that we can control the speed of the fan and control the speed of the water pump in order to control the speed of the temperature of our engine. Using this system to manage the engine temperature is critical in a race car. You'd always want your same coolant temperatures, your same cylinder head and engine temperature in order to make sure the horsepower and the engine is running consistently. In order to keep the wiring to a minimum, Brian's chosen to use the terminated Haltech LS harness on his setup. So this fully terminated harness is run straight across the engine, plugs into all of the factory sensors, it's simply connected to the battery as well as the ignition switch and you're ready to race. So other than the engine, we've got our breather tank over in the side here and all that's doing, it's allowing excess crankcase pressure into the breather tank so that it doesn't get pred back into the inlet manifold. We've also got our fire suppression system. It's very useful if we actually had a fire. In most forms of racing, you do actually need this now. We've also got our external reservoirs for the Tilton pedal box that we've got mounted inside. So we'll go inside, have a bit of a look in there and see what else we've got. So now that we're inside the car, the first thing that we notice is like all race cars, there's no leg room at all. So I'd probably struggle to drive this thing. If we go to the passenger side, we can have a look and we can see that it's got an elite 2500 series ECU. Right beside that is a dual wideband controller kit. So it's got two channels. Being a V8, it's got two banks of four cylinders. So we need one O2 sensor in either bank. That way we can do our closed loop O2 control per bank, just in case there's any differences between the two. The Elite 2500's also doing the advanced traction control in this car. So what that means is we've got four wheel speed sensors going into the ECU. The ECU then looks at the driven wheels, the back ones, versus the non-driven wheels, the front ones, and we can actually program a desired amount of slip from front to back. So let's say that might be five or 10% that the rear wheels are allowed to slip. Any more than that, and the ECU will either retard the ignition timing or introduce a limiter in case it really starts to slip. That way we get the best traction. Next to the Elite 2500 and the CAN wideband, we've got our Race Pack Smart Wire. Now the Smart Wire is a power distribution module, which means that we put our battery lug on the Smart Wire it's then got a bunch of 12 volt or 16 volt power outputs to each of the powered accessories in the car. This gets rid of any of the fuses and any of the old style relays. So it's a full solid state device. It's very reliable. It allows us to program re-time or re resets on so if a fuse breaks, for example, we can program it to retry that circuit, let's say 50 times. If the circuit doesn't recover, so that fuse definitely does have a problem, we can flag a message on our dash to let us know that a fuse is blown. Next in the lineup from the Racepack Smart Wire is the switch panel and the Racepack dash. 
Now, this switch panel is incredibly useful in a race car because let's say, for example, we've got our thermo fans on our water pump that's controlled via the ECU. If we want to override the ECU settings for any reason, we've simply got a switch that we can just override them. So when we come back to the pits, for example, we can turn the ignition on. We can have the fans and the water pumps running to cool the engine down, right down, just so that we don't shut the engine off when it's red hot. The race pack switch panel's got seven switches and one button. We typically use the button for the starter motor. We've also got ignition switch. If we turn that on, it powers up our ECU, turns on our power to the coils and the injectors. We've got our AccuSump pump. We can turn on the lights, which controls the headlights and the tail lights. We've got cool down, which runs the thermo fan and the water pump flat out in order to cool the engine down as fast as we can when we come back into the pits. We've got our fuel override, which turns on our fuel pumps flat out so we can pump a bit of fuel out for testing or pump all the fuel out to put a fresh batch in. We've got our wiper switch, which I won't turn on just now. And we've also got our electronic fuel door flap that we can turn on to open the fuel door. So let's take a look at what Brian's looking at when he's racing his circuit car. The IQ3 dash has got four different pages. So on the first page, Brian's got our best lap, our battery voltage, our current lap time, as well as the lap number, our oil pressure, our water temperature and engine RPM. This nine in the middle at the moment is showing us how many satellites the GPS dash has acquired. As soon as we start rolling, this is gonna change now our gear indicator. If I just click the button here, we'll go through to the second page. We've got our transmission temperature, our oil temp, our oil pressure, our water temperature. Again, this is showing our satellites, but when we start rolling, it's gonna show us our gear position, our speed in kilometers an hour, and our taco. The next page has got our manifold pressure, throttle position, inlet air temperature, injector duty cycle, ignition angle, as well as our RPM. If we flick across to the last page, it's got the fuel pressure out of our Bosch 044 number one and our Bosch 044 number two fuel pumps. It's got our water pressure, it's got our fuel level, as well as the fan duty cycle. So this tells us how hard the thermo fan is working to keep the engine at its operating temperature. If we flick, flick one more time through the pages, we're just gonna come back to the main screen or the number one screen. We've also got up the top here, we've got our four warning lights and we've got our shift lights along the top. So they're a progressive shift light. So these ones are set up so that the first light will come on and then every 50 RPM after, another light will come on until all the lights are flashing at the same time. Well, that's it for this episode of Haltech Heroes. Thanks very much, Brian, for lending us this beautiful Corvette. Thanks very much to you guys for watching. My name's Scott, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I wouldn't leave you hanging. We may as well give it a start, we'll give it a bit of a rev and see what this cammed out LS1 sounds like.